I got bored and went shopping on Amazon again. And that usually means we're going to talk about something that I think might be helpful. We're going to talk about riser cables, although this one is different than any of the other ones I've seen before. And it's also a vertical mount adapter that allows you to turn any PC case into a vertical mount a vertical mount, but also has full adjustability in it so that you're not dealing with so many of the problems that come with a vertical mount. So let's see if it actually is worth the 45 bucks I paid for it. We interrupt this video to bring you a special message from iFixit. No, we interrupt this interruption with this interruption, that new stuff from iFixit. We should have a new graphics card, but inventory sucks. Fix the inventory problems with iFixit. Whoa, don't drop it. Can't fix that with iFixit. Just kidding, yes you can. Wish you could take iFixit with you anywhere but your pockets aren't big enough. Introducing the new Moray. And the new Minnow. Take them with you anywhere. So get iFixit for your loved ones or just get them for yourself. So this is actually a Cooler Master one. It's the Vertical Graphics Card Holder Kit V3. Surprised it's not the Verti Cooler Master Master Vertical Maker Kit. Whatever. Um, so this one's black. They had a white one available. I ordered black and then I'm choosing a white case to do this in because I'm stupid apparently. But this is a pretty unique one because of the fact of its adjustability. Dang, it's heavy. Okay, so one of my biggest issues with... <laughs> That's a chonker of a vertical mount adapter. One of my biggest issues of vertical mount adapters that are universal is the fact that they tend to be like kind of flimsy because of the fact that they're not really mounting anything to the bottom here. Like when it comes to mounting, these go in your IO ports, like slots in the back, and then it will screw down to like where your normal holders would go for your graphics card. And then all the weight is on that back metal. So any flex that's gonna be built in here or like happen will probably be because of any flex that's happening in the back of the case. Typically a vertical mount in cases would be screwed down to something so it's solid and then you're good to go. Uh, but this one does come with a uh, PCIe 4.0 riser cable, which is perfectly fine, even though PCIe Gen 5 is a thing because your graphics cards are still not running at Gen 5 speeds. So it is a Gen 4 by 16. So and as you can see, it's a solid PCB on the riser end right here, which will mount into these screws right there. So that is like mounted down uh, solidly right into there. Um, a neat feature of this particular unit here, and I, I need to say this, even though I said I bought it on Amazon, this is not sponsored by Cooler Master or whatever. I just thought this was interesting for a couple of reasons. Let me tell you why we're doing this video. One of the things Phil said when we switched him over to the Mini ITX, um, that's not a Mini ITX case actually, it's just the Mini 011 Mini, is he missed the vertical mount. And so I knew that these adapters existed and we've seen them in the past, but they tend to lack any sort of real adjustability in there. But two, one of the things we noticed when we did the SUP01 case from Lee and Lee, when we looked at the thermal camera and the smoke flow test, is that the amount of heat also coming out the motherboard side of a graphics card, like the card that we have in here right now, this is a Gigabyte 4080 Super. It's a tri triple coaxial fan. What that means is we have three fans that are blowing down on a heat sink exhausting the air out of all four sides of the card. So all sides of the card have to be able to exhaust air. So if you have the card mounted in a motherboard like that, normally, especially if it's a high-end motherboard that has a thick plate above the PCI Express slots, that heat sink part right there gets completely blocked off. So you've now re effectively removed like 35 to 40% of your overall cooler um, surface area, maybe even more, depending on the type of cooler that it is. So I'm wondering now by moving the graphics card into a different orientation, will we get any sort of additional cooling benefit? So I've already benchmarked this card and had it looping for quite a while in Port Royal. Uh, our max um, edge temp or just normal GPU temp was 66. And I believe the max hotspot temp was 76.5 or 0.8. We'll put it up on the screen. We took a screenshot of it there. And we're gonna see if we get any sort of difference in temperature when we install this. So it's kind of a double video, if you will. How to add a vertical mount to any case that doesn't have one. MATX and ATX, by the way. This does support MATX, which means a couple of these will come off so you can fit it. And then two, um, is there any sort of cooling benefit to it? Now, one of the things that's neat about this is you get 30 millimeters of in and out adjustability. Because the biggest problem with the vertical mount is if it's too close to the side panel, you choke off the fans and then cooling will definitely be affected in a negative way. But you can actually scoot it back or towards the glass, depending on if you need some clearance on your motherboard side or more clearance on the case panel side. And you get these toolless releases right here, which allow you to then adjust the card 
back and forward. And this also allows you to pre-mount the card, get it into position, and then put the whole thing inside the case. Fortunately, the stupid designed by Cooler Master that's like literally engraved and, and cut out will be just covered by the graphics card. You won't see it at all. But this is also a nice feature to have this and these vents right there, because guess what? A lot of cards now feature blow-through design. Even this card, as you can see on the top edge of the graphics card there, has some blow-through on the back plate as well. So if you have this all as a solid piece of metal, then that's not gonna be doing you any good there. So it also helps with any radiating heat on the back plate to be able to sort of radiate through this plate. So, although it's still got a lot of solid area to it because it needs it for rigidity, um, it's still got an ability to allow uh, temperature to make its way through there. And it's got a cable tie built in, like a little zip tie area there. All right, let's put this together. Let's show the adjustability of it. Let's see if it's gonna work with the way the tubing is set up with this NZXT cooler, or if I'm gonna have to rotate it to get those tubes off the bottom so it's not inter interfering with our card. That's my biggest concern right now. Fun fact, if you've ever seen the yellow connector like this, which is on this power supply, I can't, I don't know which power supply is actually in here. I can't see the brand on it. Uh, it's got these yellow, fingers on there that way it, this was part of the early melting connector redesign where they did that so it would be obvious if it was starting to pull out you could see the yellow so when you don't see any of the yellow you know it's fully seated just thought i'd show that so it does come with all the screws you need to not only mount down the uh riser cable here but to also mount it inside the case riser cable does not have any sort of adjustability to it which makes sense because they have to be able to stay into relation where they mount down right here so this will support any graphics card that is a triple slot, at least that's what they say. Um, so be mindful of that. Some of these cards, these new cards, can be up to four slot, to be honest. It's crazy. But fortunately, because we have that in-out adjustment, we should be able to accommodate. This isn't like the largest card right here, to be honest, but, um, and, and the design on this card is kind of interesting. So you can see we have the blow through on the back right here. So this, this rear fan is really only blowing through half a heat sink as you can see in there, which is kind of odd. Um, the rest of it, as you can see, goes through here, comes out there. And then we have this pass-through area right here on the back side of the card. So that's why if, like I said, if this area were solid, I guess it wouldn't matter because it's above it. <laughs> but, but you get the idea. So the card is now pre-mounted to it, as you can see. And it's funny because this is typically what you would get as a vertical mount, like, even ones that come with cases, this is kind of a flimsy metal, but now we can just... So that clears, obviously, the uh, riser cable on the bottom, as you can see, that mounts a little shorter than it. So once you get it where you want it, these... Oh yeah, they just... Okay, so it just slides on that rail, and then these quick releases here just push friction, like it's like an oblong like egg shape. So when it turns sideways, it kind of like, then it won't let it slide anymore. You can see the riser cable just fits through there. We don't need to remove this because we're not doing a uh, micro ATX, but if you were doing a micro ATX board, you would only have three slots. I think it could possibly have four, but anyways, you have to remove that and then it goes up higher, right? So then we have this adjustable piece here that then allows us to move this like, in and out. So I'm just gonna leave it in the full rear position because I don't need it towards the glass. That'd be if you had a lot of stuff happening here, maybe water tubes or something you can run behind here. You can give yourself more clearance. Once you get that where you want it, then you just literally tighten that down. There. That's actually pretty solid. I don't have it screwed down yet. So what, what I was finagling with right there is trying to get all of the IO ports to line up in their slot. And then once they go in there, you can see the fingers hook on there and it's actually really solid. So now, Take the ones that were included. I should probably hope they're the same thread. <laughs> they are, okay. Otherwise, I just already reused the ones from the PC case. Now, I do have a lot of space, actually, between the side panel and the motherboards. So if I wanted, I could loosen this up. And move it. Now it's kind of close. There's still about an inch and a half there, but you can see I had this adjustability now, which is actually very cool. So I'm gonna kind of split the difference right there, I think. So that's not pushing on the tubes too hard, and we can still move it up and over and get our RAM out if we need, because I have to be able to access 
the bottom tabs for the RAM down there. Now, I would not feel super safe shipping it this way. I would definitely take the graphics card out if I were shipping the case this way. There's still a lot of wobble. But what I care most about is SAG. And it does not look like it is Boeing at all. It almost looks like it's anti, it's going up. <laughs> <laughs> I think this particular, what is this, H5? I think this is an H5 or H6 case. I can't remember, maybe an H5. But yeah, you're right, it is going up. <laughs> That's the thing, like if you put this in a really shitty built case with like flimsy metal, it's gonna probably be flimsy. But you know what, it's pretty solid though, given the fact that the only points of contact, you want three points of contact typically, like you triangulation, right? But it's only right here. So it's actually doing a really good job. All right, let's get it turned on, fired up, and let's see if we gained any sort of performance in terms of temperature, because I also wonder if the vapor chambers prefer to be horizontal versus vertical. That really never showed itself except for the 6000 series AMD cards where they actually had too little fluid in the vapor chamber and then it mattered by being mounted vertical. Then it mattered when the vapor chambers weren't properly filled, but that was a warranty issue. They fixed it and it's been fine ever since. Vapor chambers should not care about gravity. That's how vapor chambers work, unless they're empty. So here's the 4080 Super, the Strix Super, uh, inside that supple one case build that we did. And you can see right here, here's the riser cable. So this is a PCI slot. Look at how much of the cooler faces the motherboard. And if you use a motherboard like this, I mean, this is one we took out of our test bench, but you see how this has, the, the Maximus has this shield right here. So when you mount the graphics card to it, this whole section right here of the cooler, like up to like right there, is just completely choked off. That air cannot escape. It's, it, it can, but it's, it's very minimal. So we lose efficiency of that side of the cooler. So all the air has to go the other direction. So now, this, this is what gave me this idea by seeing this case here and the fact that how cool the card ran when all four sides of the GPU are able to get cooling, like expel the air. And then because right here, it just goes right out of the chassis. You, if you haven't seen the video about the SUP01, I think you should go watch it just because it so, shows some really cool thermodynamics in the way things work. Um, more so than we expected. And we use the thermal imaging camera and smoke flow to demonstrate that. It's very educational in my opinion. I, I think it really opened my eyes to the way some things work, which is now why this is in here. And now it's bothering me that it's higher. Like I have to now bend it so that it goes the right way. Okay. I had to add SAG to a set of I've never had to do that before. All right, so we're just gonna run Port Royal, which is of course an RTX test to get all the, car the cores loaded up. And then we're gonna see uh, how it compares to our previous run, which I have right here. My max hotspot was 76.9 and our max GPU temp was 66. So 11C or 10.9C de uh, Delta, which is very normal. So now we'll see where this gets to. It's at the very least, it should be the same. If anything, maybe slightly better now because the whole bottom side of the cooler is able to efficiently get that air pushed out. In fact, the, the only thing at that point, if we're efficiently getting the air out of the cooler and out of the GPU, that should matter then is the case. Now we have two 140 40 millimeter fans on the top going through an AIO and a 120 in the rear. We only have one intake on the front, but temps were okay in this. Uh, this should be plenty of, of heat being able to expel. So we'll see whether or not that matters. See, now our fans are running and I now know air is making its way out of the bottom, which was not very efficiently getting it out uh, against the motherboard side, not to mention the little cable block blocker thing that is always in the NZXT cases. It's like a, like a staple of NZXT. Also was very close to the heatsink. So I'm assuming, I'm hoping for a couple of degrees difference. Realistically, it'll probably be nothing. Okay, so a little bit of an improvement. It's currently at 65C on the GPU temp and 75.8 on the hotspot. It was actually 74 a second ago. It kind of goes up and down depending on the part of the test that it's running. But you can see the max it ever got was 66C on the GPU, which is the same temp actually, but 77.8. So what I'm noticing here, it's not current, the current value is not running because of the fact that we stopped the test. So it's showing 210 megahertz. This shows it had a 2670 megahertz test. I'm pretty sure when I stopped it right now, it was 2715. Okay, so I heated the card back up. It did spike to 67 and then it came back down to 65. We're still at 77.2 currently on our hotspot, but look at our, it is 2715. I thought I saw that it was at 2715, but there's no doubt we gained boost speed though. 2700, it just dropped down. It'll come back to 2715. It might go 2785 for a split second, but it'll come back up to 2715. We've been watching it. It was stuck at 2670. I don't think this orientation really had much to do with that, honestly. I mean, this is, first of all, this is such minor. <laughs> 
such minor boost bin adjustments that this could just be variants in a million different things. There could be some background task also that was hitting the GPU a little bit um, that's affecting the test in some way. But real world test, took the card, ran the test, put it in the vertical, ran it again. And these are the back to backs. I, if we really wanted to know whether or not the orientation matters, I would have had to have locked the RPM at a specific, or the fans at a specific RPM. I, I don't think at the end of the day, this should be a choice on doing it because you want to make it cooler, unless you want it to look cooler. I do think this looks better. Like I think most people now, nowadays, vertical mount GPUs, this is just a staple. Like even little icons for PCs now show a vertical mount GPU. I think this is, this is nice looking, as long as you have the space between the glass. That's the biggest issue for anyone running a vertical mount uh, in their, especially with big graphics cards today, is the fact that if you can't get the proper spacing between the glass and the fans, you're going to heat up your card. Uh, otherwise, clearly, this, in my opinion, looks better, and it allows you to take a case that doesn't have a vertical mount with it and add a vertical mount. So I think we might try and squeeze that inside Phil's uh, 011 case, because it's a, it's a micro ATX set up as well, also an EATX or a regular ATX. So we should be able to get that to fit in there no matter what. So, all right guys, thanks for watching. Hope you learned something today. I'll put a link to this down below. I'll remember this time. I suck at putting links down below, but I'll remember because that's the whole point of today's video. And uh, it's not the cheapest one, but it's not the most expensive one. But so far, it's, as far as I can tell, the most adjustable one, which is the most important thing. All right guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.